Hey, this is Skylar from TheMixingProcess.com. In today's video, I want to talk about something that pretty much every audio engineer has run into at some point or another in their career as a mixing engineer. And, and that's when you're mixing, you're, you've got your faders up where you want them to be, your speakers are up, and for some reason you just can't get the volume that you need out of your PA. Maybe that's in the form of you have a musician on stage who's using a, a monitor wedge on stage and they just keep asking for more and more and more and they can't seem to get enough of what they need to get enough volume out of that speaker. Well, there's a few things that we can check in that process of trying to figure out what's going on, but typically by the end of that, if you pass those different checkpoints, there's usually one reason why you can't get the volume that you need out of your speaker, and that's what we're gonna address today. But before we do that, I'll jump through those, those four checkpoints real quick just to make sure that your signal is following the right path, going where you need it to go, and there's nothing along the way that's messing you up. So a lot of these are things that I've done before myself, so I, I know in experience that these are problems that can happen and can really get in the way. So the first one is gain staging. I made a whole different video about this before, um, going really in depth with gain and understanding how it works and what it does, how to set it properly. A lot of people are really confused about that. So if, if you aren't really sure what I mean when I'm talking about gain, go watch that video and see if you can catch up a little bit with this, this concept. Well, a lot of people, when they're gain staging, if they don't gain it up hot enough, then the signal is really weak. If you don't get your signal up to line level where you need to, it's low resolution, it's a weak signal, and by the time that signal reaches the fader, it's too weak in order to be pushed hard and get the sound and volume that you need out of it. So that's the first checkpoint. The second one is volume reduction via plugins. So one example of this that I've experienced before I was mixing, I had this vocal that I had to push the fader up really, really high in order to get him where I needed him to sit in the mix. And I couldn't figure out why I had to push this one so hard. And then as I was looking through my signal path, I realized that on my EQ, I had carved out so much of that signal for trying to correct tone or correct feedback or whatever it may have been at that point. I car carved out so much that it reduced the signal so much so that by the time it got to the fader, there wasn't really a whole lot left to work with and I had to push that fader way harder than I needed to. So the way to fix that was just to go back maybe readdress the EQ a little bit. And after I did that, I had plenty of signal to work with. And that this can happen with EQ, it can happen with compression, really any plugin that can reduce the, the level of signal you have that has the potential to be able to mess you up in this process. So the third thing is check your level on your groups, your DCAs, your master fader, everything. Make sure that those faders are where they're supposed to be. So a lot of times if you have a really complex setup with signals going to different groups and subgroups and you know your master and all of these different things, it's really easy to forget and get sidetracked of where your faders are. So if you're having trouble with getting enough out of your system and your speakers, go back and check your signal flow. Make sure there's no point in that flow where there's big scoops being taken out of that because that'll really come back to bite you. The fourth thing is broken cables or pieces of gear or equipment in the signal path um, with or without volume controls. Sometimes even the ones without volume controls, if there's something broken, it'll cut your signal down. But especially ones with volume controls, if you have an amp or something like that in that signal path, then sometimes if that volume is turned down too much, it doesn't matter how much you push it at the console, you're not gonna get as much as you need to the PA, and that can be a problem as well. So check the gain staging, make sure you go check all the plugins, check your signal path, make sure all the gear in that signal path is set where it's supposed to be. If you go through all of these checkpoints and you something's still wrong, you're just not able to get what you need out of it, there's probably one thing 
wrong that we can address here. And that is your speakers aren't big enough. They aren't powerful enough to push the sound and do what you're trying to do with them. So it doesn't matter how much you push from the, the console with your main fader or your individual faders or groups or whatever, if the PA or the monitor is not strong enough to do what you're asking it to do, it's simply not going to get there. And this seems to be, when you think about it, it's kind of obvious, but we seem to forget that speakers like every other component that we use they have a capacity, they have a designed capability, and you can't always push them past that no matter how many faders you decide to turn up in that signal flow. They have a range that they're able to accommodate for. So an example of this, I had a worship leader come up to me once and say, I've got this, this monitor that my pianist uses and we have it cranked all the way up and it's pushed from the console and it just distorts and we can't get it loud enough and we've pushed it as hard as we can and we just can't get what we want. And I told him, well, your problem is that your speaker, this tiny little speaker you're trying to use is not big enough or powerful enough to do what you're asking it to do. So it's just going to distort it's, and eventually it'll probably blow out as well. So you want to make sure that your equipment is strong enough to do what you're asking it to do. And in this case, that's something that a lot of people run into. They push as hard as they can and can't figure out why they aren't getting the volume or performance out of their system that they need. So that's something I've experienced, figured that might be helpful for somebody else out there. If it was helpful, you can leave comments below, ask me questions, I'd be happy to answer them as best as I can. And if you're new to this whole mixing process, if you're trying to figure out EQs, compression, you know, how to set your gain, how to mix, how to do all these different things, I have a guide on my website, themixingprocess.com. It's called the seven step mix and it walks you through the seven steps that I use every single mix. It walks you through setting your gain, doing your EQ, your compression, your different effects with reverb delays. It walks you through that in a systematic way so that you don't miss any of those important steps in a mix. So again, you can find that. It's a free download on my website, themixingprocess.com. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.